welcome everybody thank you so much for joining us uh, over to you ritika thank you so much for joining us thank you so much for having me and thank you to all the participants for your time i really hope that you enjoy this session as much as i enjoy the subject so uh, let's get right to it yeah so what does sleep mean to you now i'll just get on to it the sleep is like eating like breathing and reproducing sleep is a fundamental state of being it is something that you have to do and it is something that as i'll show you in the next slide almost all animals sleep actually all animals that we have studied so far they sleep now what exactly is sleep one thing that could come to your mind is that when a person or an individual is sleeping they are less alert so if i hit you like this now you will be like oh why did you hit me but if you hit just slap a sleeping person lightly they most likely won't even wake up or no so they're less alert they are inactive and if we are talking about animals they are vulnerable to predation so it's easier for a lion to go and eat a sleeping deer than to actually hunt it down and run after it right so as we know that in evolution that is throughout ages which animals survive which die in in that sense it's very important to be fit it is very important to be able to survive and if you're sleeping and a predator can eat you up it can kill you then that's not a very good thing for evolution it's not a very good thing for survival and yet so many people so many animals they are sleeping sleep is so common and it is so essential so it just reinforces the fact that sleep is necessary and yet it has so many drawbacks if you look at it that way but again i ask you how do you feel when you're not able to get enough sleep you feel groggy you, you cannot focus in your classes it, it's just so many things that absence or lack of sleep does to you so that just tells you how important it is right so who sleeps what do you think like do you think frogs sleep can can you can i get a thumbs up or something like that in the yes so frogs do sleep but how they sleep and in what conditions they sleep <laughs> you sleep in class and i sleep in class that's great that's not very good but okay <laughs> but yeah so all animals sleep starting from hydra to jellyfish worms crabs lizards fish ducks sea otters seals giraffes i bet not many of you have seen a giraffe sleeping like that and to the biggest of whales all of these animals they sleep many of these animals do not even have proper brains they just have some nerve cells that many nerve cells will come together to form a brain but some do not have that kind of specialization of nerve cells so they cannot do many other things but they can sleep so sleep is that important even the most fundamental organism sleeps so let's just start with some basics of sleep that everybody should know and should be aware of how much sleep does one need per day so if you count if you add all the hours of sleep that you go through in a 75 year life span you'll see that you approximately spend 25 years sleeping that is one third of your life is spent sleeping and at different ages the amount of sleep you need changes so babies need the most sleep they need 12 to 17 hours of sleep preschool age children need 10 to 13 and as you go on the sleep need reduces a little bit but even adults need 7 or more hours of sleep so the baseline should be 7 so it it should be taken seriously and there is something known as a chronotype a chronotype is basically it determines what hours of the day you're most active and accordingly when you are comfortable falling asleep or staying awake depending on that it's easiest to classify people into morning larks and night owls 
So night owls are people who feel active during the evening and they may prefer studying at night, going to sleep late, getting up late and morning larks are just the opposite. So one should know that both of these are normal if they get enough sleep. But the society, our society, our day-to-day -day life is structured such that the biases lie a little bit more towards the morning larks. It's easier for them. So, so Ritika, just a few things. Yeah. Firstly, whose baby sleeps 12 to 17 hours? Like, <laughs> I want to know that. Second thing, seven hours, no way. I'm more 12 hours. And oh, third wow. thing, there has to be a third category of people who are neither yes. owls nor larks, but who can sleep anytime, all the time. Exactly. And I, this is a category. Okay. There are only hummingbirds. <laughs> It works. It works. I mean, it's a nice description. I can call myself a hummingbird. <laughs> okay. Maybe we'll stop for some questions. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, so nice questions, Nehal and Ritika. Do insects sleep? Oh, yes. Insects do sleep. And some insects, I'll tell you about sleep in insects. Um, I will tell you in some of the later slides. Okay. It's, it's really cool the way they sleep. Okay. Um... Let me see if we have any more questions. Um, so what are you guys? Maybe we can ask them, Shnehal. Are they larks, owls or hummingbirds? What are you guys? Do you get up in the morning or? Do tardigrades sleep? That is a wonderful question because I met a person a few days back and he said he's a sleep researcher and he said that he was going to study sleep in tardigrades. And see, by the common definition of sleep one might say that no tardigrades don't sleep but if you consider that um, a tardigrade is for some hours of the day a tardigrade will be a little bit more inactive than it is in the other times of the day so in that time if you try to give it some kind of a stimulus or like try to arouse it give it a signal that it will that it may perceive and it doesn't do that. So you can assume that, yes, it does sleep. So this has been observed even in algae. If you know about blue-green algae in the waters, sleep-like patterns or rhythms, um, a periodic activity and then inactivity, these kinds of things have been seen even in those organisms that have no things that, are, that resemble nerve cells. So... Yes, um, tardigrades may sleep, but that's the question, the big question that what is sleep and why do things sleep? So in the broad perspective, you might say that they do sleep. How do fish sleep, sleep in the ocean? Yeah, we're coming to that. Okay, so there are a few more quick questions maybe that we can go through. Uh, one is, is our brain active when we sleep? Oh, yes, <laughs> that is a great question. And you'll get more clarity on that. But yes. Your brain is active when you sleep and what level of activity it is in varies during the whole duration of sleep. So there are some phases where it's less active and some phases where it's more active. So yeah, it is active when you sleep. Okay. Uh, so Marwa has a very nice question. Uh, she asks, what happens if jellyfish don't get enough sleep or what if they don't sleep? Like, just like when humans don't sleep, we get angry or we get sad or unhappy and... Yeah. just frustrated what happens to fish or yeah. jellyfish so specifically for jellyfish uh, sleep in jellyfish it has been found that jellyfish show pulsating movements like this right so when they do not get enough sleep this is how they move so they aren't able to escape from potential predators if they haven't had their enough sleep so it impairs their uh, ability to escape or ability to function in general. Okay. All right. I think we can move ahead and then we'll come back to some more questions later. Sure. So sleep is important for your learning and for your memory. You need to sleep well before you learn something new and also after you've learned that new thing. So before you've learned something new, it's like your brain is like a sponge. And if that sponge is full of water, it can't take in more new water, right? So that sponge has to be dry. So sleep makes the sponge of your brain dry so that you can take in more memories 
or more water when you're awake that that's how it prepares you to learn and then after you've learned something sleep determines how well that learning or that memory gets saved in your brain there's something known as memory consolidation um that happens when you're sleeping so it enables you to remember the rele- relevant things longer and delete the irrelevant or the older things that you haven't used for a long time so in a way it's like a computer you're getting rid of those files that you do not need anymore and you're saving or you know better locating those files that you use more you get the most important files to the desktop and the less used files you put in some documents folder so in a way sleep is doing that for you so it's saving space it's reorganizing things so that's why it's very important um this is a very good visual so in on the left you see on the this whole thing it's a functional um, mri which is a way in which you can visualize the amount of blood reaching your organs so here you can see the orange blobs means that blood flow is high in that part and if blood flow is high it means that those parts are more active or involved in the task at hand so on the left side you see the brain activity in an individual during some kind of cognitive test like something that uses the brain after a normal night sleep so there is way more parts of the brain that are active and involved but on the right side you see this the rights on the right side the person is sleep deprived hasn't had enough sleep and very less parts of the brain are able to be involved in that learning so just see the contrast this is what a night of poor sleep does to your learning ability so that is fantastic kritika actually if we sleep less we have less blood in our brain when we are trying to learn something new yes and th- that's why even if you fall asleep during this session i'll be happy <laughs> <laughs> i don't think that will happen but our young minds will go away with that thought that depriving yourself of sleep actually has physical effects on your body definitely definitely the the strength of the connection between one neuron and the other that depends on how well you've slept and that determines how well you remember something or how well you perform eventually so yeah it's really important <laughs> now uh, i'll quickly go over the effects of sleep deprivation i won't stop much here and then we'll take some questions so this is a very startling figure 20% of car crashes or even near crashes it was about to crash but didn't it happens because of driver fatigue which means that the driver didn't get enough sleep and then he or she was driving so short sleep is associated with higher levels of a hormone called ghrelin and lower levels of a hormone called leptin ghrelin makes you hungry and leptin makes you satisfied you don't want to eat more if you have high leptin so you have a lot of ghrelin and lower leptin which means you're hungry more more often you have higher appetite and so it may lead to obesity which happens very commonly and poor sleep is also uh, related to poor response to pathogens that is disease causing organisms foreign organisms that may elicit a immune response inside your body and if you have a disease it will take you longer to recover to it if you haven't had enough good sleep good quality sleep and then these are the most obvious ones after that sleeplessness is related to many other things like diabetes heart diseases hypertension stroke and sleeplessness itself is a symptom or part of the disease type of many other psychological disorders so everyone should sleep <laughs> so do we have any questions or i'll move on uh yes okay so there are a few questions um ala asks, so does this mean that if we sleep more there will be there will be more blood flow to our brain <laughs> see um there is an optimum requirement to sleep so the 10 to 17 hours 12 to 13 hours those things i showed you that is you that's the enough range within which if you sleep your body will be happy if you sleep more then i mean first of all your body won't 
really allow you to sleep a lot more because there's something known as homeostasis. Homeostasis means regulation. Not too much, not too less. So that thing is always going on inside your body. Even if you want to sleep more than 17 hours, you won't be able to do so very well. It will just be lying around and uh, just being there. It won't really be sleeping very well. So it might do you some good. But again, if you do not use your body parts for a very long time, for a very long time, not saying a few hours, for say many months, then because of disuse, your muscles and your, many of your other cells and tissues, they will start atrophying and you don't want that either. So that happens. That is a concern in bears. Bears show something called hibernation and I will come to that later. Okay. Certainly. All right. So uh, lots of questions. Anushka had asked a really nice question before. Um, her question was, what is the difference between sleeping and unconsciousness? Mm. So sleep, unconsciousness and sleeping. Sleeping is better described as an altered state of consciousness rather than unconsciousness because there is something called as arousal threshold. Arousal threshold means that how strong does a slap need to be to get you out of that state of consciousness in very crude terms. So when you're unconscious, the arousal threshold is going to be higher than what it is when you're sleeping. So when you're sleeping, I can hit you at level two of slap and you might get out of it. But when you're unconscious, I will need like level five or something like that. So that is one way to put it. But again, there are many differences because again, there are different levels of sleep. There is one level of sleep, which is deep sleep known as non rapid eye movement sleep and one level of sleep, which is called uh, no, it's later come to it. Uh, and it is called REM or rapid eye movement sleep, which is when you dream. So uh, in these different states, the consciousness and what consciousness is also related to what you experience in that state. So the REM sleep or the dream sleep state has a different kind of consciousness experience compared to the deep sleep or the um, non-rapid eye movement state where you do not dream very often. And sometimes when these sleep states are not distinct, they mix, you have things called parasomnias. Parasomnias are unusual um, behaviors like sleepwalking uh, or talking in your sleep. So those kinds of things also happen. But in when you're unconscious, these things are not there. Okay. I think we can move ahead, Hrithika, and then we'll come back to some more questions later. Okay. Uh, so now we are going to go into a cave where there is not going to be, there will be no light, no sunshine, nothing. So, oopsie. Did I? I'm sorry. I will just go back. This is quite like a virtual experience, a 4D <laughs> experience, guys. We don't need even go to a theater. We're doing 4D on TTAS. <laughs> okay. So say, get ready to say bye-bye to sunshine. It's a little sad, but very interesting. So like us, two people, two researchers went into a cave in 1938. Uh, Nathaniel Fleetman and his student Richardson, they went into a cave for 32 days and this cave was located in Kentucky known as the Mammoth Caves and these, these caves are such that no light enters and you get stalactites, stalagmites, all those kinds of things. They went with a, a pair of um, foldable beds and eight pails of water. So if I can, yeah. So here you see there are buckets at the foot of at the foot of each bed. So you see each bed has four buckets of water. This was to ensure that no insects climb onto their bed while they're sleeping. And they stayed in this darkness for 32 days. And what they realized is that even in the absence of light, their sleep-wake cycles continued. And one interesting observation was that 
their sleep wake cycle that is the periodicity so you're once you're asleep then you're awake and this goes on like a cycle the duration of the whole cycle it increased from 24 hours to nearly 25 hours so they realized that it is not just the outside light or the sunlight that is responsible for that is day and night is not just responsible for when you're awake or asleep there is something inside you that also determines when you're awake or asleep and so this led to the discovery of circadian rhythms circadian rhythms are biological rhythms that are that's your body's internal clock and circadian rhythm is a kind of biological rhythm there are many kinds of biological rhythms even menstrual cycles come under biological rhythms so circadian rhythms have this part of a brain the part of the brain called the hypothalamus it's like inside really deep inside your brain that has a region called the suprachiasmatic nucleus which is that internal time keeper right so here you see that your mom is like the or the your dad whoever wakes you up in the morning is like the suprachiasmatic nucleus they there is day and night but to make sure that they are waking you up at 6 am to get you ready they need an alarm clock to make sure that it's all on time everything is works like clockwork so light and dark is like that alarm clock the suprachiasmatic nucleus is like your parent who ensures that the alarm clock and how you work is in sync and you are your brain <laughs> your body basically so sleep wake cycle is a kind of circadian rhythm that is governed by your body's internal clock as well as the outside light and dark so as i i have already told you about this that there is the cyclicity the cyclic uh, ability of sleep where you first have non rapid eye movement or deep sleep where the waves of deep sleep they are like this uh, here so they are tall and they are fat uh, this is the kind of brain waves you get from an electroencephalogram and while you're in rapid eye movement sleep you you experience many things first rapid eye movement so even when your eyes are closed your eye eye balls they move from right to left these are known as saccadic eye movements and there are muscle twitches and people usually dream in this stage so throughout the duration of the night or if you are an animal that sleeps during the day that is if you're nocturnal then first when you're awake you slowly go into deep sleep that is the non rem sleep and then you gradually come to rem sleep or the dream sleep stage and this um period this this uh, sequence takes approximately 90 minutes to complete in humans and throughout the night you go through many such 90 minute sequences so um now we will go to snooze news and before that if you have any questions uh, although i think we covered this earlier also so would you like to ask me something uh, or, i think one question that a lot of people are asking is like sometimes people talk in their sleep or sleep walk or things like that so how does that happen in what stage of sleeping does that happen yeah so what you're seeing here this is a hypnogram this is what you will with this tells you which stage comes after which previous stage and for how long it lasts now this is what will happen in a normal person but as i said there can be things called parasomnias parasomnias are when the occurrence of the rapid eye movement state the non rapid eye movement state these things get mixed up so your brain is not showing this kind of activity at one time or that kind of activity at one time Uh, it's mixed so if that if it is mixed then you see these kinds of things where you can be sleep walking or you can be talking and the characteristic of these kinds of behaviors like sleep walking and talking is that when you wake up the next morning you will have no recollection that you actually did these things so this happens when uh, this kind of these sleep stages get mixed up and the causes can be many there are many hormones and many neurotransmitters inside your brain inside your body that are responsible 
for each sleep stage to occur when and for how long it does so if you are under some influence of some medicines or some other chemical that messes with those uh, hormones and neurotransmitters it can mess up your sleep cycle if if you are chronically sleep deprived that is you haven't had proper sleep for a very long time even then your sleep stages can get mixed up and you can show this kind of behavior okay uh, i think we can move ahead and then we'll come back to some more questions after we watch these videos okay sure so yeah now we will show you the latest in sleep from across the animal kingdom and first <laughs> we have a dog in rapid eye movement sleep so this is a dog who is going to be dreaming and before showing you the video i want to tell you that all of this is normal if you sleep, see this in your pets then don't get scared they're just sleeping and this is how their bodies work so it's nothing to be scared about so this dog is in rapid eye movement sleep you can see these to and fro movements of the eyeballs now the thing is you might see that the eyes are open the eyelids are open so how is that happening so these animals have something called a third eyelid or a second eyelid sorry uh, which um, is known as the nictitating membrane so it's like this transparent layer over the eye which is shut in this case and it helps to keep the eye moist so they can have their eyelids open but the nictitating membrane is still over the top you can see it a little bit around here so you can see a little bit of the um, the snout twitching the body like you know the face moving a little bit so this is this is a characteristic of rapid eye movement sleep so this is what your dog might look like sleeping let's see what your cat might look like sleeping this is a cat in rapid eye movement sleep a little bit more <laughs> scary again the nictitating membrane of the second eyelid is there and you can very clearly see the twitches in the body um probably dreaming of catching nice mice <laughs> and let's go to hippos now and this is a hippo sleeping under water and now you'll see that the hippo is going to rise take a breath at the surface and then come back to sleep now there is one really cool thing about hippos that it is known that they have a reflex that allows them to without waking up go up to the surface bob up to the surface take a breath and come back down now reflex means that they don't have to put any conscious effort into it it's something that their body just in instinctively knows how to do so this hippo however in this video the exact depth of sleep is debatable i couldn't find a very nice video of the reflex but this is what it looks like uh, a hippo sleeping under water hippos are mammals so they they have lungs like us so the way they would hold their breath under water is very much like we would under water and now to the most exciting and one of my favorites fish this is a parrot fish this is an animal that actually builds a mosquito net around itself of sorts so it gets saliva you could say mucus out from its mouth and builds a bubble of mucus around itself before going to sleep at night and this makes sure that parasites don't come and attach to its body while it is sleeping because often these small things here you see this arrow these come and feed on its surface these insects come and sleep uh, you know um, trouble it this is an animal that actually helps to clean it so basically it's like a mosquito net these kinds of things also you observe in nature and how does a fish sleep a fish basically becomes inactive and becomes like stationary inside the water and you can't see their eyes close or not because they don't have eyelids but yeah that's how they sleep and if you try to wake a sleeping fish it will take more effort to wake it up so again increased arousal threshold it's a way in which animal sleep is measured mm -hmm. um prithika we should stop for questions lots of questions so first question is i mean like why are these animals even doing work when they sleep 
like for me i i'm i'm joking i mean the idea of sleeping is just not to do work it's to zone out but some really good questions maybe we can take them straight ala asks why are the hippo sleeping in water why are they not sleeping on land in the first place yeah very good um so hippos do sleep on land but sometimes they sleep in water also uh, for for example in that video that i showed you that is from a zoo you can imagine that you are inside an enclosure and there are 600 people staring at you you might just want some privacy so you sleep under water but um, there are many things it could be really hot outside so you go inside water many many things it's just an option for the hippo since it might the hippos stay a lot in underwater so it's part of their habitat and the way they live and they can come up and in yeah. you know in still in that state take a breath and imagine if we could do that like i i don't think i would get out of the pool so <laughs> <laughs> so adwa has a question her question is what happens to what happens in a cat's mind when they're sleeping do we know if like animals can dream do they also go through the same stages of sleep yeah um most of the mammals go through the same stages of sleep um what happens in an animal's mind inside its body all of these things we can know from a practice or scientific um, technique known as polysomnography poly many somno sleep graphy measurements basically so those um waves i showed you they um, are a part of polysomnography um all of the the messages that your body sends inside muscles for muscles to work inside neurons for signal transmission it is basically electricity electricity or um you know voltage differences lots of electrical terms so those can be measured and on the basis of that we can determine what kind of activity is going on inside the brain so yes the the videos i showed you of the dog and the cat sleeping they were while the animal was dreaming so it could be anything um sometimes you know in dogs it's really common to see that while the dog is sleeping it's moving its legs like that so people assume that maybe it's chasing something in its dream so yeah that that does happen and they do dream Although you can't talk to them and ask them, but based on these characteristics of polysomnographs, we can say that they probably have a very high chance of dreaming. Okay, so there are a lot of questions coming in about dreams. Uh, so I'm gonna like pull up a few questions together. So Kavish asked, "Why do we dream at all?" Um, mm -hmm. And then another question was, "Why do we have nightmares?" Okay, um, so this is. dreaming and rapid eye movement sleep that is the dream stage of sleep is a very controversial topic controversial that means that we don't know a lot about it but on the basis of what i know from different sources so we can't say that since i am saying this or since i have read it somewhere this has to be true what it actually is for what its real need is nobody knows because in many animals um when you take away the chance for that animal to go into the dream sleep stage it doesn't affect them at all but in some other animals they do show some effects of dep deprivation of rem sleep so what it, is it really necessary we don't know also in people who have clinical depression if you suppress or don't let them dream they show better i mean it helps them actually so that is also there so it is said that there is a part of your brain known as the amygdala the amygdala is very highly involved in rapid eye movement sleep and the amygdala is also involved in emotions how you feel and your subjective in your own interpretation of things so rapid eye movement sleep and dreaming is a very is a very is an experience that is different for every person depending on your experiences when you were awake that is in many ways determines what you see in your dreams so so that is why it is hypothesized that rem sleep or dreaming is important for emotional um, development and the 
you know to make sure that your emotions are in place and you feel the way you feel about things so yeah that's mm-hmm. what i can tell you about it okay that was a really really interesting explanation i think you answered a lot of questions that people had about dreams and sleep so before we move on maybe we'll take one last question which was from mm-hmm. pooja i think her question was can animals also walk in their sleep can animals sleep walk basically yeah so sleep walk animals can swim in their sleep i'll tell you about that now <laughs> but the way they sleep is different if you are asking me can they dream about something and then try to enact that in their sleep that i am not very sure of but it may be possible so the thing about dreaming and animals is that dreaming as i said it depends on each individual each organism so it's a very subjective experience subjective means how you, what you dream of is unique to you so we can't ask animals what they dreamt of so that's why it's a little difficult that's tricky question to answer but yeah animals can even swim in their sleep i'll tell you about it now okay i think we can move ahead then okay uh so sleep in aquatic mammals um basically you think of it this way you are an animal you're a mammal you have lungs you need to sleep inside the water you're a seal or you're a dolphin or you're a whale you have no other option you dolphins and whales have to sleep inside water so what could the challenges be you will need to breathe for that you need to come to the surface and you have to make sure you don't take water in you need to keep moving to be able to do this if you come to the surface it is more likely that a predator will see you and eat you up so you need to be vigilant you need to make sure that nobody is around you and you also need to maintain your body temperature because you know inside water water has a greater thermal conductivity which is basically it can take more heat it can um, it has a greater capacity to take away heat so there can be a lot of heat loss so how do you tackle all this now sleeping with half a brain or uni hemispheric sleep uni one hemisphere half one half of the brain each half of the brain is called a hemisphere and uni hemispheric sleep is where the animal sleeps with one half of the brain while the other half is awake okay so here you can see that the right half is awake and the side of the body the body parts opposite to the awake half of the brain they remain active so if my right brain is awake then my left hand can move and do things but if the le- and simultaneously like with the right half being awake the left half will sleep so my right side my right hand will not be able to move so this is how animals even swim when they are uh, sleeping and what kind of animals can do this all of these animals seals dolphins whales birds crocodiles all of these animals can sleep unihemispherically where one eye it's mostly you see that one eye is open because they don't need to not all of them need to move while they're sleeping so you see that one eye is open now why do they need to do this i'll tell you um so i'll quickly go over um because we have had lots of questions so quickly I'll go over how seals sleep now seals are aquatic mammals and there are different kinds of seals this is a kind of seal that has the ability to sleep unihemispherically so here you see that the right half of the brain is awake so the left flipper is moving the left eye is open and the nostrils are outside the water so the animal can keep its balance and stay at the surface and can breathe all the other parts of the body like the right flipper and the tail all of it is outside water so this is ensuring that these parts do not lose heat so here you can see a sea lion is very closely related to this you can see that moving and outside so i mean this is not very deep sleep so moving a little bit more here you can see that it's that's how it happens and since the right half is awake and the left half is inside the le- left half is sleeping so the left eye is open 
and the left eye is inside the water so if any way orca whale or some predator wants to come from inside the water and eat this guy up it can see and it can wake up and escape so that is really cool <laughs> and um, i'll show you another kind of seal this is the kind of seal that i work on a little bit with some friends in california these are fossil seals they cannot sleep unihemispherically but they can do something even cooler they can sleep inside the water and they have very cool lungs so they can hold breaths for 20 to 77 minutes so they can go without breathing for so long and if we see how uh, it looks like so you see this is an elephant seal sleeping under water oops see yep that's what it looks like so okay this is this is what happens when dolphins sleep now dolphins do not have an option they have to sleep you know hemispherically and when dolphins are sleeping in groups they have this really cool thing where suppose they are sleeping in a group and the group is swimming in a clockwise direction so you see clockwise direction so they have a way to decide which eye to keep open so which brain to sleep with and which brain to be awake with so they sleep such that the eye that is directed towards the center and towards the opposite member of the group while swimming that eye is kept open so holly will keep her right eye open so that she can see polly and molly will keep her right eye open so that she can see dolly and vice versa so that if any predator is coming from this side polly can alert holly and so on so they can see each other and also beyond each other to make sure that everybody is safe so this is when they're swimming clockwise so if they swim anti clockwise they will keep their left eye open and this is this has been observed in dolphins bottle nose dolphins okay and after this slide i'll take some questions so sleep in birds um again in birds also they need to be vigilant so here you see a row of sleeping ducks this is very interesting because ducks when they are sleeping in a row the ducks that are present at the extreme ends of the row that is this one and this one only these ducks will sleep with half a brain all the other ducks sleep with both like normal sleep both brain halves will sleep together so these ducks like this duck will have only its right eye open so that if somebody comes at it from this side it can see and act and tell all of the other ducks that okay you've got to run now and this duck that is on the other end it will have only its left eye open so that if somebody comes from here it can alert the others so that is how ducks sleep when they are in a row and this is a very cool bird called the great frigate bird in this bird it has been studied that when they are in long migratory flights so birds need to uh, migrate in cold conditions to warmer areas and when they're doing this how do they sleep because for so long you can't just keep flying without any rest there has to be some way to get rest these birds sleep while they fly with half a brain and you might wonder that how do scientists get to know that the animal is sleeping with half a brain or both sides of the brain this is done by using really cool instruments called this thing you see here it's called a neurologer this uh, is attached with some electrodes that are in the brain of the bird and these record those signals those electrical signals that you see in the polysomnograph and this is a gps tracker basically to make sure that you know where the bird is flying it also gives you information about how the bird is moving so when the bird is flapping its wings or when it's taking a turn so that kind of information also you can get and this this neurologer thing it has a memory chip so once you get that memory chip you can put it in your computer and see all the information 
so um why sleep with half a brain we've went gone through all of this so do you think humans can sleep with half a brain um similar things do happen in humans um for example first night effect when you go to a hotel many people find it a little difficult to fall asleep at the, on the first night because of the unfamiliar conditions in such people it has been seen that one of their ears is more alert than the other ear one of they they wake up quickly if they hear something unusual and so um, this kind of an asymmetry that is both of the hemispheres of the brain are not equally asleep this has been observed in humans also but not at that extent that is been seen in those animals also in some major depressive disorders and other such depressive disorders this has been seen and another very important you i mean cool thing is that if this is a person and you make that person work a lot with only their right hand during the day so you um, keep you know keep asking this guy to hit his right hand like this 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 this, this throughout the day and when that person will sleep at night you will see that they will get more sleep in the opposite half because the opposite brain will control this hand so their left half of the brain gets more sleep than the right half so there are some situations where we might show similar effects also okay uh, let's uh, take some questions <laughs> yes okay lots of questions uh, one question i think was about the ducks um how do the ducks decide who's going to be on the edges and who's going to sleep with half eye open and who gets proper sleep with both eyes closed so. yeah. <laughs> yeah very good so um it in the studies where they did this they noticed that over a period of time um, the ducks that they, they take turns and although it's not very organized like you might think but um, the they since they keep taking turns they wake up in between go and eat a little and then come back and sleep so when they are coming back to sleep the ducks who were at the edges will uh, will in the next turn they'll be in the middle and the others go to the side and so it it just they just they're very fair that way and yeah how do they decide i guess they have a way of communicating with each other exactly okay. so another question is about the dolphins So uh-huh. you told us what how dolphins sleep when they're in groups, but what happens if a dolphin is sleeping alone, or do dolphins never sleep alone? No, no, dolphins. Yes, dolphins are um, social animals, so mostly they are in groups. But yeah, a dolphin may get separated and it may just sleep alone, so it'll have one of its eyes open, and well, since it's swimming, it'll make sure that. I mean, there there are many things, right? A dolphin, like a like in a seal, you saw that only one of its sides, one flipper is moving, one uh, tail flipper is moving. But in dolphins, it's a little different. The whole body moves. Both of its fins can move, even if one half of the brain is sleeping. So there is a little bit of uh, debate ab- about how much. there is a crossover between the signals of the brain in these animals so yeah even if only one eye is seeming it seems to be open yet the dolphin is able to perceive from throughout the body so yeah and another very important thing uh, very cool thing about dolphins is that when a mother and a calf are sleeping a newborn dolphin is with its mother then for many weeks the mother's eye that faces towards the calf is kept open and the calf's eye that faces the mother is kept open for many weeks that happens so that is really sweet but i'll say something about human mothers both our eyes are open <laughs> so dolphin mothers cannot steal the limelight <laughs> Uh, okay, I think Pooja has a question. Pooja's question was, "Why can't why can't humans sleep with half a brain?" Yeah, so that is something that I want to find out as well. Um, there are many things. So for this, you'll have to go into the depths of the brain, and there are structures called the corpus callosum. It's a nerve tract that con- connects the right hemisphere to the left hemisphere. 
of the brain there are many such tracks along your brain that is connection collections of neurons connecting the two halves in cetacean cetaceans are dolphins and whales the corpus callosum is very small so that may allow them to sleep in this way in humans it is pretty well developed apart from that there are things called posterior commissures that also aid in the communication between one half and the other half so the the structures of these uh, parts of your brain differ in those animals and in us and there are many ideas about what else could they be could the things i mean making this happen be what would the differences be but you know that there are many restrictions and as should be on experimentation in animals right so that actually i mean you can't really open up a dolphin's brain like that to just see how it sleeps so there are lots of ethical questions so people are investigating non invasively without hurting the animal much and hopefully i'll have a better answer for you <laughs> in a few years okay uh, i think we can move ahead hrithika uh, because we only have a few minutes left so yes. maybe we can wrap up and then we'll come back to some questions in the end sure okay so um i'll just quickly tell you about tor- uh, sleep and hibernation the difference and i will skip a few slides i think um hibernation is not sleep hibernation and sleep are very different hibernation comes under a broad term known as torpor torpor so you must have heard about black bears that hibernate for the winter you may have also have heard about hamsters some kinds of hamsters and hummingbirds these animals go into torpor or a short duration hibernation many many times in a day so they um, exhibit what is known as daily torpor now i i we got a question earlier about whether the brain is active during sleep so we saw that yes it is active there are many of the neurons they function differently but there is activity but in torpor there is almost no activity very few of the neurons are active very few of the nerve cells are active so torpor is basically when the animal reduces its metabolic rate or the the processes of its body like the a particular cell of the body may be giving making 10 products when the animal is awake but when the animal is torpid that is in torpor it's making just one product so it's very less active so if we look at hummingbirds and at normal times their body temperature is around 30 degrees celsius or 37 degrees celsius but in torpor it can go as low as 3.3 degrees celsius the reactions of the body just shut off for that duration and this generally happens when the conditions are not perfect for the animal that is there is not enough food or it's really cold things like that and so again heartbeat of a hummingbird is 1000 to 1200 beats per minute while it is flying it has to flap its wings very fast its wings need a lot of the wing muscles need a lot of oxygen but when the animal is in torpor it can be around 50 beats per minute also so that is the kind of thing that happens but in sleep these things don't happen now why is sleep different from torpor because when an animal is in torpor it gets out of torpor so that it can sleep so in torpor the animal is not able to sleep and why that happens is another research question <laughs> so one of you can anybody if you can go ahead and <laughs> um read about that we don't know yet the reason uh, why sleep can't happen while an animal is in torpor and um butterflies so insect and frogs these animals are also known to show things similar to torpor mm. if anyone is interested if you guys want to stay i can tell you a little bit about that but for now i'll move ahead um sleeping upside down so here you saw that this hummingbird was sleeping upside down how does it do that it can do that because it has birds have very special legs 
so in birds they have something known as the digital locking mechanism so if the bird is just you know if the weight of the bird is on its legs it has to latch on to something but if there is no weight on the bird's legs that is when it's flying it's it can be like this the claws can be open so for example when you look at a uh, an eagle coming down to swoop up its prey uh, the bird approaches like this because there is no weight on it but when it the moment the prey comes in contact with it it just since there is weight in contact it holds it like that and it doesn't have to do any effort to catch this because that is just how the legs are built if there is something in contact it has to hold it like you can see here okay um i have a question for you and then i'll take your questions so can you guess why animals like bats need to hang upside down at all and here is a hint for you hmm. something to do with the fact that they don't have hollow bones yeah is that a close close guess yes the hala oh, says so they so have so hollow bones don't have a different bone mm -hmm. okay then um another answer we've got in the chat window is yeah different bones to use less energy yes yes because their legs are designed like that okay okay Maybe. then abhishmat says something about heating of the blood uh, no <laughs> uh, not real not exactly because they want to be a joker <laughs> okay okay um so that they can nap attach their weight okay uh, everyone is close let me put it i make this figure to explain this both of these individuals are in air you could say that they are almost flying right this is both these are mammals bats are also mammals so bats legs are not designed like that and it is related to energy and bones everybody was right so is it you tell me is it easier to be in the air when you jump up from the ground or is it easier when you fall down from the air it's easier when you fall down right to i think so yeah, yeah. so when a bat has to fly or you know escape from any approaching predator or anything that can harm mm -hmm. it it has to make sure that it can do that most efficiently quick in the quickest way possible so they have evolved such that if they are hanging upside down and something comes they can just leave their leg and fly rather mm. than having to propel themselves from the floor and get into flight so i i found that really fascinating so i put it here very and, nice <laughs> thank you okay. and i think we'll take questions now yes Let's are we done ritika with the slides um yeah i wanted to tell you about octopus versus jellyfish sleep can see that quickly because some people have a confusion about the difference so octopuses have really cool brains jellyfish do not have brains and yet both sleep so i wanted to see that wanted you to see that difference and again about dreaming so it has been studied that if an, if you see a octopus like this and it's changing color so it's probably dreaming so <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. okay oh nice Anyway, they have all the slides to look at. Yes, yes. So I was yeah. just going to say there are a few more videos on the slides, but we are going to put these up on the website. So all of you can spend time looking at them as well. So oh, we are done. This is the last yeah. slide. So I mean, I wanted you to go with this question that I wanted you to explore if you want to. That do you think plants also sleep? Um, yeah, basically in the day the leaves open. and throughout the day when you reach night the leaves close back so do you think that is sleep <laughs> that's that's one thing i wanted to put out there for you to go sure for. seems like it sure seems like it but <laughs> it seems a little more graceful than us falling to sleep for sure <laughs> all right okay. okay uh okay everybody's already saying yes in the in the chat window plants do sleep <laughs> Okay great <laughs> really happy you feel that way um but again there are some differences yeah it just questions the notion of what sleep is mm. and we do not know the correct answer to that yet so yes you might just say that they sleep okay all right so thank you so much ritika this was a wonderful session